So in this video, I'll go through how you can configure onboarding with ClearPass as well as instant access point. So we've already gone through how you can create a dot one X SSID on IAP. I'm not going to go through that again. It's very simple. You create a dot one X SSID. You point it to ClearPass as your radius server. You use WPA2 enterprise as your security authentication scheme over there. All right. And in in the last tab, which is access control, you define unrestricted. Now remember, there are two things to onboarding that you have to keep in mind. There will be two roles that will be created on IAP. One is called pre onboarding role. The other one is called post onboarding role. Okay. What I mean by pre onboarding role is as soon as you finish dot one X authentication, remember that this is a personal device. Okay. So as soon as you finish the first dot one X authentication, you put into the pre onboarding role in which you will be redirected to a captive portal page. So in IAP on the pre onboarding role, you have to redirect to a captive portal page. Is that clear? Like remember the guest logon role? It's the exact same thing. Instead of putting the guest page over there, we will put the onboarding page over there. That's it. Okay, and in that role, you will allow access to only ClearPass server, nothing else. Okay. Second role is post onboarding role, which is once you finish the authentication. Which role you will get, which is post onboarding role in that you will define the access restrictions. So for example, it's a personal device. So I will allow access to mail server, probably my Salesforce server, but not to my other financial servers, etc, etc. So all those settings controls in the post onboarding role. Okay. You can name it whatever you want. Post onboarding, personal device role, whatever you want. But two roles should be created on the IAP. One is pre onboard which is nothing but a captive portal, which will redirect to an onboarding web page and a post onboarding role, wherein you will define your access restrictions for a personal device. Is that clear? So once that is in place, let's start building our policies as we do. Now for this, the easiest way of doing it is there is a template. Good news. So we go to configuration, start here. In this, we'll click on onboard template. Once we click on onboard template, I'll just specify my initials. I click on next. I select the controller. Click on next again. Finally, wireless SSID that needs to be added for onboard provisioning. So I will just say, AB dot one X SSID and I'll click on add services. So it creates three services for me. These are the three services 12, 13 and 14. Okay. AB onboard provisioning. As you can see, this is a dot one X service. The remaining are the application service, radius service and application services. So if I click on this dot one X service, let's see what happens in the dot one X service. First of all, SSID name equals to AB.1X. Okay. Then you can see that it tries to perform an authentication. The first authentication that will happen is with EP. Okay. Because you will, you will use your username password to authenticate. Fine. Username password authentication is nothing but EP. So that authentication can happen against anything. It could be a guest user. It could be an in the onboard device repository or I mean, onboard device repository is required. Don't remove that because the second authentication will happen through that. So you remove the guest user repository and replace it with local user repository because we are doing it against the local user repository. If it's an AD, you can put an AD here. Okay, and move this up. Finally, under enforcement, what are the things that you see here? First of all, there are two profiles that we are primarily sending. One is post provisioning and the other one is pre provisioning. Okay. So if the authentication source is not onboard device repository, what that means is that it has not been authenticated with the certificate that is present in the onboard device repository. Then I will assign a pre provisioning role. 
okay but if i am authenticated with a certificate that's present in the onboard device repository or if i am authenticating using eptls then i will be in the post provisioning role because if you see there the last authentication happens with eptls okay so i will only go to post provisioning role once i perform eptls okay in fact this onboard device repository is used because the second authentication itself can be eppeep as well if you want onboarding can also be performed with eppeep you don't push a certificate but you just configure the wireless profile with the unique credentials so for that this rule is there <clears throat> so now you click on save and then let's see the other two services so the other two services are nothing but the application services so as soon as you connect to the ssid you first go into the pre provisioning role in the pre provisioning role you are redirected to a web page in that web page you enter your username password that username password has to be validated that is validated using the next two services which are the application services okay so it will first hit the uh, the pre auth one and then the authorization one okay once these two services are hit the device is provisioned by itself and once the device is provisioned it will again hit this particular service which is onboard provisioning service and in that the device it it will perform eptls so it will go to post provisioning role okay so in the post provisioning role we define whatever access the it's supposed to have so this is how simple the configuration as far as the services are concerned okay but now what we have to work on is in the pre provisioning role what are the things that we'll see on the captive portal you know for the captive portal we created a guest self registration page previously but what do i have to do for onboarding users for onboarded users where do i create the page what happens in the back end that i'll show you next okay so for that you have to go to guest or you can just click directly on clear pass onboard so once you click on onboard there are three things that you need to configure here okay once first you click on network settings this is an example network i usually just use this or you can duplicate this or copy this in this you just say specify the name of your company or whatever you want ab and the ssid name for which the user will connect after onboarding so for example if it's a dual ssid first time it will be going to ssid guest or whatever it is second time it will go to another ssid that ssid has to be mentioned here because it will configure your wireless profile for that ssid okay so here i will say then click on next remaining settings are not required at this point of time but you can even go for peep authentication as i said previously so i will not get into this right now i'll just save this okay once this is saved you have to go to deployment and provisioning under that there is a configuration profile again the default profile you can use or you can create a new configuration profile profile you go to edit you have automatically selected your network as ab okay the one that is mapped with the network settings here okay so whatever network settings you created here is mapped with this configuration profile with this check mark that's it that's the only thing that you have to do here the last step the last step is you go to provisioning settings and this is the main step actually uh, so let me go ahead and do it on a new video